Schwartz is with USGS. Um, he is going to be talking to us. Uh, David, are you there with us? I am here. Okay, tell us a little bit. Uh, bring us up to speed. Uh, you, you know, this was kind of a, a, a rock and roll kind of thing that a lot of people are feeling. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are feeling it. And just for the record, I'm, a, I'm an emeritus scientist. Um, I was with the USGS for almost 33 years. And um, I was sitting working on the program for our earthquake hazards conference for Northern California when suddenly at home my desk started to shake. A few little things fell off uh, shelves in my uh, home office. And I said, wow. We're having an earthquake. I said, and I said to my wife, I think from the duration and the strength, it must be very local. And then it came in that it was in San Ramon. I'm in Danville. So anyway, it, the uh, first event was a uh, uh, 3.8, and it's been followed by now, I see, uh, six, seven aftershocks, um, which are all smaller. And... Uh, we don't really know what fault produced it yet. Mm. Uh, the earthquakes were close to a fault called the Pleasanton Fault. It's part of the Calaveras Fault System, which is one of the big faults out here in the East Bay. Um, and uh, earthquakes of this size are not unusual in the San Ramon Valley. Uh, San Ramon Valley is known for earthquake swarms. Um, there have been six or seven of these swarms going back to the 1970s where a fault will get excited, turn on, and it could produce earthquakes for a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, right now, all we can do is say, yeah, it was a 3.8, uh, and sit and watch what develops. So what can we learn from all of this? I mean, should we expect to have more faults because you're saying that you know it's a swarm so are we should no, we just I'm not expect saying it's a, a swarm I, i'm saying we don't know if it will turn into a swarm oh, okay. right now it's a uh, one earthquake with seven small aftershocks which is very typical and um if these continue and they continue to, into tomorrow and the week after and the week after that. Then we have another one of these San Ramon Valley swarms. At the moment, we just don't know. There may be nothing else, you know, later in the day. So all we can do right now is sit and watch what develops. Again, this is, this is just, again, a wake-up call for people. Uh, to think about being prepared and what's going to happen when something really, really large happens and the electricity is off and the, um, we're dealing with a lot of problems. So uh, it's a reminder, you know, that we're in earthquake country and the San Ramon Valley is certainly, it has certainly been a source of uh, felt earthquakes for, for many, many years. And I, I guess that's the takeaway, David, is that we, we don't know. So, therefore, that reemphasizes the fact that we do need to be prepared no matter where we live in the Bay Area. Exactly. And, you know, for, for this, um, people out here should look around and do I have flashlights? Do, you know, where can I get extra power? Uh, are my phones charged? Um, uh, do I have do I have ample supplies? You know things like that. It's just a reminder. We tend to forget. We get caught up in so many other things. And right now, this was just a little uh, slap on the knee or a punch in the earth to say, hey, you know, earthquakes are real and they happen here. I think that it's it's easy to get your eye off of the bigger picture these days when we were talking about everything from COVID and the pandemic and inflation and all of these things that seem to kind of bombard us. But we, we need to also make sure and be mindful about the fact that we need to go over those totes that have the supplies. What's in your supply chest? Oh, we've got, we've got extra water. We have uh, 
cab that free free dried food. We have some medical supplies. Uh, we try and keep uh, you know ahead of the game on prescriptions uh, where we're able to do that. Um, so it's the these are the kinds of things that can take you for a couple of weeks in case you you know things are out that long. And something else which um, I try and tell people. Uh, keep your gas tanks full. Mm -hmm. uh, people tend to run, <laughs> drive and then, you know, only have uh, 25 miles left in my tank. And the reality is if we have a large earthquake and the power is out, all of the gas pumps are run by electricity. And you're not going to be able to get gas. So that's another thing to, small thing, but another thing to think about and um, it'll keep you prepared. I always remember my grandfather telling me to make sure that my gas tank never dropped below <laughs> half a tank. That, that uh, it still is in the back of my mind between all of my siblings and cousins and so forth. So I always, it's in the back of my head. So I, and then keeping some money, right? I mean, we, we need to have uh, cash is king. Yep. Uh, and then, as far as, you know, family, if you have a pet, you want to make sure you have some extra dog food, a, a leash maybe in your car, you know, and just to go over the fact that maybe if your car is in a garage, you know how to open with the emergency hatch, right? Yes, yeah, and that's a, that's a problem for, uh, for many people is their cars are in the garages and if the power goes and their electric doors, it may be really hard for some people to get their vehicles mm -hmm. out. Um, I, so, you know, know how to do that, know how to release the doors, and practice that. It's not, not a big deal, but uh, it can be, be life-saving in many ways. Without a doubt. I mean, I know uh, covering some of the fires up in the North Bay, especially the Wine Country Fire, we had to cover people that sadly, um, tragically were stuck inside their homes and, and died. So I uh, certainly took that lesson and made sure that I had the batteries in the garage door <laughs> so I could get it open and that kind of stuff. And then the blankets. I remember also picking up some of those you know those metal blankets or whatever they're called there's a fancy name but they're very helpful yeah they sometimes they call them space blankets uh, they're uh, foil and uh, you can wrap them around you and uh, you know they actually do a pretty good job of, of keeping you warm so there are all of these all of these things that people should think about yeah, and as you were saying, a lot's gone on, a lot is going on. Earthquakes seem to have fallen out of the news, and the fact that there hasn't been much talk about them, and we haven't felt many of them, you just tend to forget. And um, this was, as I said, this was so far, so far, a general reminder that we are an earthquake country.